My name is Amata, and in this Red Gamer Tech video, I am here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So, what do I have for you today? Well, we've got a video that is all Intel all the time, and a lot of Canon Lake stuff today. As first of which, we have a Canon Lake Y M3-8114 Y dual core processor being spotted. Then we have the 8121U being spotted on Sysoft Sandra. And speaking of the 8120U, we also see it raising its head on the ARC database. Then we're going to move on to, to some actual comments from Intel who have spoken on what effect the 10nm delays are or not going to have on the 7nm CPU transition. But as I said, let's start off with the Canon Lake Y. So this particular piece of news comes to us thanks to a Twitter user by the name of Tom Appysack. And of course I'll link the original tweet in the description below this video. But basically what we have here, as I already said, is Canon Lake Y M3 8114Y. Now of course the previous chip that we saw, the 8120U, is part of the Y family. So now we are seeing a sort of a different branch to the Canon Lake tree as it were. So the Canon Lake Y series is part of ultra low power designs and has the lowest TDP parts for, as you might expect, conserving as much power as possible and also having as low noise as possible by not having any fans. And obviously you, the clock speeds that we're getting are lower to meet those specifications, allowing maximum battery times and all that sort of stuff. So what do we actually have in terms of specifications? So we've got a base clock of 1.5 gigahertz and a boost of 2.2. Again, at least according to the spec sheet that we have at the moment. Now you may recall with the 8120U that there was no iGPU and of course any notebook making use of this particular chip is going to have to use a discrete graphic solution, but that is not the case here with the Canon Lake Y 8114Y as it does have an Intel UHD graphics chip and the entire processor has a TDP of 4.5 watts which I'm sure you'll agree is nothing short of minuscule. Unfortunately we don't know how many execution units are going to be available on the iGPU and the specs that I've already given you are pretty much all we have to offer unfortunately but we can fully expect to see more from Intel in June at Computex. Now, of course, we're name dropping the 8121U a lot in the previous segment, and then we're going to move over to a rather lengthy segment on this particular processor. As I already said, we have a benchmark, the very first benchmark for this particular CPU on the Sysoft Sandra database, and it looks like they're straight from Lenovo's testing labs. As it was spotted in a Lenovo 81EY IdeaPad 330, 330 excuse me, 15ICN. Now, as you're fully aware, given the series of leaks that we've discussed from Sysoft for both AMD and Intel over the years, Sysoft Sandra leaks usually mean that we are sort of heralding the entry of the product into the marketplace very soon, as they usually happen at the very end of a product development cycle. So we can probably expect to learn way more about this at Computex and probably see this being widely available shortly after. But of course, that is pure speculation. It's just kind of following on from a trend that we usually see with Sysoft. But let's talk the actual specs that we have here. So we see a base clock being listed of 2.21 gigahertz and the boost being roughly somewhere near 3.0 and it has 512 kilobytes of L2 cache and 4 megabytes of L3 cache and it scores 142.13 in the aggregated score which is average and a decent score for a chip that has such low power. And speaking of, you may have seen my original video on the 8121U and you may recall this was a leak coming out of China. Well, around that time, the guys over at Hexus.net, and of course I will link their article in the description below this video, decided to take a wander over to the Intel Arc database to see if the 8121U was listed in order to verify the specs that we had seen. But they have decided, not being perturbed by the fact that it wasn't there at the time, to recheck again, and we can now see it listed in the processor database and pretty much confirms what we have previously reported regarding the 8120U being you know, two core, four threads, all that sort of stuff. We do see one extra piece of information that it can support up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 RAM in two channels and a max bandwidth of 41.6 gigabytes a second. So overall we're getting a nice little picture forming of the 8121U 
and it is looking like yes it is an improvement on the previous generation but it's not a huge jump it's not the massive difference that you might be expecting we are seeing again improvements but given how much time this has been how many times excuse me this has been delayed and of course all the yield issues that intel are having this might be coming out with a pop rather than you know a giant explosion with fireworks and you know cheerleaders and all that sort of stuff so obviously we should not hold we should hold fire and you know not to chuck the whole thing in the bin just because of one benchmark for one line or one part of the line should i say but it's not looking promising at the moment but again this is just one small segment so i'm looking forward to seeing more of what canon lake has to offer but it's not exactly starting off with an amazing showing shall we say and speaking of 10nm and the delays i do have a bit of a statement here from the head of engineering over at intel so basically what he said here uh, is that, that anyone who is saying that the 10nm volume production schedule being pushed back is going to make the 7nm transition also be delayed is making a quote premature assumption and then he was presenting at the JP Morgan Global Technology Media and Communications Conference and he still unfortunately couldn't give any indication as to when we're going to be seeing 10nm produce in volume and he said, quote, I've given ourselves no specific timeline. Again, it's when the economic timing makes greater sense for us in terms of when we hit the right point in the yield curve. So I think we'll take it with a little bit of wait and see. But certainly my mind will be ready as soon as we believe there is a significant capability to cross over on a cost structure point of view. But the main crux of what I want to discuss here is his comments regarding 7NM because, you know, 10NM has been delayed multiple times, there's been multiple issues, and it's not unreasonable to say that because of the 10NM issues that it could have a knockback effect on the 7NM production node. But he is saying that is, as I said, premature. And he said, quote, I think that would be a premature assumption. If you look at the technical risk factors in 7 versus 10 NM, they're very different. 10 NM is basically with a generation that was really focusing on delivering 2.7x scaling in an environment that wasn't assisted by UE EUV. And for those of you going, Bleh, what is EUV? Well, it's extreme ultraviolet lithography. It basically allows cheaper, less complex, but more dense processes to be created at the 7nm level. And this is going to apply to both Intel and AMD and make 7nm very, very different from 10nm. And there's going to be fewer steps involved in productions and it's going to put the process at nine steps versus the current 34 that the 10nm design requires at the moment. So basically, 7nm is a much simpler chip to produce with the use of technolo this technology. That's basically why he's saying, like, look, you know, I can understand where you're coming from, but, you know, it's premature to say that 10nm has not had EUV. And, of course, there are other factors as well that he's undoubtedly not mentioning. But... Hopefully this will mean that 7nm will not be plagued by the yield issues that Intel have been suffering with 10nm But we are still talking about a brand new production process with new equipment So I'm not going to say it's going to run completely smoothly without a hitch because I don't think that's happened in the history of technology ever But hopefully it'll be less turbulent for us all but of course, when they do get 10nm sorted, they're not going to jump straight to 7nm, so it's probably going to be a little while before we see 7nm really coming into play for consumers. Of course, we have seen them reiterate and reiterate and change 14nm. We have seen a huge increase in the performance from the first 14nm chip to the current Coffee Lake, and I'll not be surprised to see Intel continue down that path, or a similar strategy, should I say, for 10nm. Assuming, of course, the yields improve and the issues kind of iron themselves out and we start to see better, more promising results from the chips in this particular processor line. Intel are obviously hoping to iron out the 10nm issues, but they even then once they've done that, even once 7nm becomes good, they're not going to jump straight to that. They're going to obviously get that in hand while continuing to improve upon 10nm and we'll probably see, as we've seen with 14nm, improvements come over the years as of course we start to speculate as to what 7nm is going to bring us. At the moment at least, 14nm is going to continue on until the beginning of 2019 with the 8th gen design and then Intel is going to move on to 9th gen cores which of course are going to make use of 10nm. 
But what's interesting here is, of course, what's going to be happening over at Camp AMD, because 7nm Zen 2 processors could very well be on the market by the time Canon Lake is really finding its feet. So we could see Intel be in a little bit of trouble in the CPU market if this actually holds true. Of course, there is more to what makes a processor line good than the NM number on the end of it, but it is definitely going to be a factor and the fact that AMD will be ahead of them in this regard is definitely something in the back of Intel's mind. And the last comment that he made is, quote, I'm excited about where we are in 9, clearly very aware of the competitive environment, and I'm sure we're going to need to deliver our very best in order to make sure we maintain our lead. So Intel are, of course, aware of this. They're not going to be resting on their laurels, but they're definitely going to have to bring out their A-game, I think, if 7nm Zen 2 is going to be out around the same sort of time that Intel is getting into the real swing of 10nm. But, of course, this is... Partially speculation and partially pontificating on the present. But of course, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.